Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Brother Life Christian Church. Our virtual Sunday morning worship service is here on Facebook Live. Amen. As we endeavor to remain connected to each other in the spirit, even though physically we are not connected to each other in the sanctuary at this time. Amen. So we're going to ask you, as we always do, Amen. To join in with us in your homes, worship and praise. Hit that share button and let your family and friends join us in worship. And they start a watch party if you will, or if you desire to. Uh, but let's get into the presence of the Lord even in our homes. Amen. Because He is wherever we are. We are the vehicles and the houses of the Spirit. So wherever we are, there is the Spirit of the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. So get your family on in the room again. Hit that share button on this video, amen, so everybody that you love, amen, can hear and, and join in with us today, amen, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for God, this opportunity and privilege you've given to us to join together here today in worship. Uh, even though we're not physically connected right now, God, socially and spiritually, we are yet still one body, God, with one mind and one purpose, and that is to everything, not just today, give your name the glory, give your name the honor, and God, we thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We, we thank you, Lord God, for providing for us everything that we need. Because your word has declared that you have given us everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness. So God, we thank you today. God, we thank you, Lord God, for healing our bodies. We thank you for healing our minds. We thank you, Lord God, for taking us through this difficult season, yet with our joy remaining, yet with our faith growing, Lord God, yet with the praise remaining on our lips. God, we just thank you today. Hallelujah, God, because if we had 10,000 tongues, we still couldn't praise you enough for everything that you've done. So, God, with this moment and space and time today that we have, God, we just thank you right now. We just praise you. Hallelujah, we exalt your name above our issues. We exalt your name above our problems. We exalt your name above everything that's going on in the earth right now, Lord God, because your name, according to the word, is a strong tower, and the righteous can run to it and be saved. So, God, we, we call upon your name today. We, we call down your power, Lord God. Let it fall down fresh, your anointing, in every household right now that is open and receiving this word right now in the name of Jesus, God. Let your anointing fall fresh in that house, God, right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, as these families are joined hands and they're joined hearts right now in front of their phone or in front of whatever they're watching on right now, God, wherever they are, Lord God, let your spirit rain down upon them right now. Let their mouth be open to sing your praises, Lord God. Let their hearts be open to receive your word, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We are asking you this, God, because we need an overwhelming of your presence in our homes. God, not just in the sanctuary, but in our homes, God, we need an overwhelming power of your presence, God. So I'm asking you right now, Lord God, to go into every house right now. Touch the heads of those houses right now. Touch the marriages in those houses right now. Touch the children in those houses right now. In the name of Jesus, say that we serve you, knowing that you are already defeated. The blood of Jesus is against you. I call these homes blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. I call that husband, that wife, that boy, or that girl blessed, strong, prosperous in the name of Jesus. You said we have whatever we say, and we don't doubt in our hearts. God, I say we are strong. I say we are healed. I say we are safe, God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray now for everyone that's sick. Hallelujah, Lord God, that healing manifests in their bodies in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone that is down right now, Lord God, that there be uprising in their house right now in the name of Jesus. We speak to the spirit of oppression. We speak to the spirit of depression in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We speak to the feeling of inadequacies right now. And I remind every single child of God that they are at least good and very good. Everything that you made is good and very good. I call you back to remembrance. Hallelujah. That God loves you and he's giving you the earnest of his spirit. Hallelujah. You are not what you were, but you are what God is making you to be. In the name of Jesus, Father, bless us now. In the name of Jesus. Bless us now, God, as we go into these next few moments of worship. Hallelujah, God, that your spirit lead and guide us, God. That it guides our hands, guides our feet, guides our tongue. 
Let the song that we sing, let our praise be a sweet sound in your ear. In the name of Jesus, receive now our praise. Receive now, oh God, our worship. And bless us by your word. We give you glory today. We give you honor today, God, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's enjoy the Lord in some songs. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're going to get right to the word. And you know what? We're going to sing this song. And this might be a prophetic song as you sing because you still might be going through something. But I want you to think back on what God has already brought you through. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song. You brought me through this and you brought me through that. Come on, sing it in your house. You brought me through.
you feel so much. Hallelujah. You got to just make a declaration. Hallelujah. Even in the middle of why you don't feel like it, just how blessed you are. According to the scripture, Deuteronomy 28, if we hearken unto the voice of the Lord, if we do what's just and pleasing in his sight, blessed shall we be in the city. Blessed shall we be in the field. Hallelujah. Blessed shall be the fruit of our body, the fruit of our ground, the, in the increase of our kind. Hallelujah. We'll be blessed, highly favored. Hallelujah. Above all that and not beneath. That's what the Lord declared. We want you got to walk in the word of the Lord in obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are blessed in the city. We are blessed in the field. We are blessed when we come and when we go. Hallelujah. Yes, sir.
My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Father, we thank you now, O oh God, for your word. We're asking you, Lord God, that every heart, every mind that's listening now be open and receptive to what the Spirit has to say to the church. We're thankful, O oh God, that you sent your word to heal us. We're thankful, O oh God, that we are cleansed by the word, Lord God, that you have spoken unto us, that you have left us as a guide on our way through this life. And Father, we just ask it now, Lord God, for a fresh anointing, a fresh enablement, a fresh outpouring of your spirit. Lord God, be upon me now, Lord God, as I speak to your people. Lord God, nothing for me, all for our benefit and for your glory. So we give you the glory now, O God, the honor, the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Those that are here may be seated. Amen. So I want to use this last message of this series, amen, to encourage you from the subject, press under pressure. Press under pressure. Why that's something? Because sometimes the best way to deal with pressure is to apply pressure. The best way sometimes to deal with pressure is to apply pressure. And I just want to remind you that pressure is defined as a feeling of stressful urgency caused by the necessity of doing or achieving something, especially with limited time. And so here this woman of Canaan She's got some pressure she's under. Because the scripture tells us that her daughter is extremely or grievously vexed with a devil or a demonic spirit. And this woman came to the Lord with this issue. This issue I want you to understand is the pressure of her life. It's causing her stress. And she has a sense of urgency that she needs to have something done before this demon kills her daughter. Amen. I don't know if you've been taking any notes as we've been preaching this series, but on the week one, amen, it was faith under pressure. Where the man came and his son had a similar issue. His son was had a demonic spirit and he was under the pressures of those issues related to his son. Amen. And, and he wanted to have his son healed, but couldn't get healed by the disciples and that shook his faith. But he came back to the Lord and he said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And then we spoke peace under pressure. And their issue was their life was in danger from the storm. And, and, and that's a lot of pressure. Uh, last week we spoke praise under pressure. The issue in there was the plot and pursuit of David's enemies. And yet his decision, and out of all of that pressure, that he was yet going to praise God. He was yet going to hold on to the hope of his salvation. And here this woman, amen, of Canaan has come to the Lord with an issue. The man with the issue of his son, the issue of his shaken faith, the issue of them, hallelujah, needing peace in the middle of the storm, then the issue, hallelujah, with David's enemies surrounding him, and he still prays God. And now this woman has an issue with her daughter that was about to die because of this demonic possession. Here is what I want you to understand, that the pressures of this life come from the issues in our life. The issues that we have in our life, they apply pressure on us. They stress us out. They, they cause us to fear when we should be having faith. Uh, they cause us to speak things that are not in line with God's word. But we have to understand as a child of God, only that we speak, what we speak by faith is what moves God. And so our issues in our life, they are things that bring pressure on us. The issues, they come, and whether we believe God or not, they're going to come. But it's better than if we believe God and have faith, hallelujah, that will cause us to be able to get through these issues of life that cause us so much pressure. Issues come whether you are saved or whether you are an unbeliever. Issues come whether you're black, white, whether you're rich or poor, 
Whether you're short, tall, whether you think of skinny, issues come to every single thing that God has created. But the difference is, if you have issues but you have faith in God, hallelujah, you will find a way through those issues. You will find a way to deal with those issues. You will find a way to get through the pressure that is caused by those issues if you have belief and faith in God. So this woman of Canaan, hallelujah, she threw caution to the wind. Why do you say that? Jesus was helping everybody. Everywhere he went, he was helping people. But here's the thing and why this is noteworthy in this instance of scripture. Now this woman of Canaan was a Gentile. In other words, she wasn't supposed to be in contact with the Savior. The Old Testament prophets, they denounced the area of Tyre and Sidon where the Lord wound up in. Now, you mind me, in the scripture, he said that he departed from one place and he wound up in Tyre and Sidon. Why would he go someplace that the Old Testament had already denounced and called this place wicked? Hallelujah. He did so because Jesus, and according to John 3, 16 and 17, hallelujah, where he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, not just one sent people, but that the world through him might be saved. So it's no mistake that he went to the place of Tyre and Sidon, even regardless of their wickedness. So a man who's called to save the Jews would not communicate with the woman such as she was because of the place that she originated. Uh, but she had a need that caused pressure, and even greater than that need, she had knowledge of the Savior. I want to speak right there because you might have a need in your life right now that's causing you a whole lot of pressure. And you have to have something greater than that issue, and that is knowledge of the Savior. Because if she didn't have knowledge of the Savior, she wouldn't even be in this scripture. She wouldn't even be written in the word for our example, for our learning. So the scripture was not supposed to be in it, a communicate or direct contact with the Lord. So what she did was she cried out to the Lord from a distance. Hallelujah. Even though she knew to keep her distance, she still cried out to the Lord. So here come the disciples recognizing, hallelujah, that this woman is a woman of Canaan and not one of their origin. They told the Lord, send her away because she cries after us. Now, now you know, nowadays somebody telling me, I wasn't talking to you. Ain't nobody call y'all. I call Jesus. I call the master. She cries after us. Now here, uh, she has the pressure of her issues. First of all, the pressure of her issue was that her daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. That's the pressure of her issues. Now she has the pressures of people who are standing in the way of her getting what she needs this day and time, but they start speaking something negatively because you want something from the Lord. We let them cause us to go back into a shell because we're not ready to deal with the pressure. But I want to tell you today, hallelujah, that sometimes when you're under pressure, you just got to get some strength from God and apply some pressure. She got the pressure of the issues. And she got the pressures of people. The disciples saying, Lord, send her away because she cries after us. Hallelujah. But even though you're under pressure, sometimes you've got to press under the pressure. Finally, hallelujah, a response from Jesus who had answered her not a word. He said in so many words, I only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's the pressure right there that the only person that can help you, hallelujah, is refusing to help you. This lady came to the Lord because she had heard of him. The fame of the Lord Jesus went farther than he had traveled. Hallelujah. Because I remember the lady at the well said, come see a man. Hallelujah. Who told me everything about me. His fame spread abroad. So everywhere he went, they already knew what he was capable of. So when this woman came to the Lord, she first knew that he was able. And then for him to ignore her, and when he answered her, he told her, hallelujah, words that seem to be rejection. My God, if that ain't some pressure for you to be dealing with an issue, and the one that you know, hallelujah, can save or deliver, seems like he's not concerned. But sometimes when you're under pressure, you got to apply a little more pressure. But see, when he told her, hallelujah, I have not come except for the lost sheep of the house 
of Israel, she pressed, hallelujah, the pressure. She came before him, hallelujah. I, you might not have heard me because I was far off, but I'm going to draw myself closer to you now. Hallelujah, because I've got your attention. The Bible tells that if you draw nigh to the Lord, he will draw nigh unto you. But she pressed under the pressure. She came before him and she worshiped him and said, Lord, have mercy on me. He said, I didn't come for you. She said, but have mercy, hallelujah, on me. See, you got to get to the point to where, hallelujah, your need for deliverance is heavier than the complaint that you're doing. is heavier than the whining that you're doing. Your need for deliverance, you're not going to let nothing stop you from pressing to get there, even if you're under pressure. This lady said, Lord, have mercy on me. In other words, she's saying, I get what you're saying, but, but the pressure of the situation is, is forcing me to aggravate you a little bit, if you will. But the pressure of the situation won't let me just walk away because of what you've said. Because I already know I'm not of Jewish descent, she basically said to herself. But she said, Lord, help me. Listen, let me tell you this. You might not feel like you're getting anywhere in this thing, hallelujah, but sometimes you just got to shout and scream, Lord, help me. The rejection got a little bit harder. She said, Lord, have mercy on me. And then she cried out, Lord, help me. And then the rejection went just a little bit further because Jesus said, it's not right for me to take the children, meaning Israel's bread, and throw it to the dogs. Now, it's important that we understand that the Greek word for dog typically refers to little house dogs or lap dogs. So he wasn't insulting the woman by basically, now he wasn't calling her a dog, uh, but basically he was saying like in your house, if you have a pet, you will feed your children and then let the dog get the scraps. Metaphorically, what he was saying is that, hallelujah, you're going to have to wait. Uh, but when you have this kind of pressure that this woman had on her, you got to keep pressing the issue, hallelujah, that is pressing you. I'm going to say that again sometime because of how heavy this thing is. And in this season that we're in right now, hallelujah, with social unrest, with the pandemic all over the entire world, saints of God, you're going to have to press the issue, hallelujah, that is pressing you. And you are going to have to do that even under pressure. So the Lord said, it's not fit, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and to give it to the dogs. And the lady acknowledged that she said, it's the truth, Lord. I said, she said, truth, Lord. I, I know you didn't come for me and show other words, but even the dogs of which you reference, either the crumbs that fall from their master's table. What she was saying in so many words is, I don't have to eat first as long as I eat. Uh, see, when you learn that you have to press even under the pressure, when you learn that you have to, hallelujah, even when sometimes you're in pain and when pressure is being applied to you, that sometimes you gotta refuse to quit. Sometimes you gotta refuse to just walk away because you didn't hear what you wanted to hear the first time, hallelujah. But how, hallelujah, you want from God what you want from God sometimes you got to press my brothers and sisters even when the issues of your life have you burnt down you got to tell yourself Robert I got to press even under this pressure she said no but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table I know you didn't come here for me but I'm sure enough there's something enough Hallelujah, that you have that can help me through this issue. But see, you might be asking me now and thinking, how does one apply pressure when you're under pressure? The first thing I will tell you is how to apply pressure we see right from this woman. And the thing is, you've got to stay in God's face until you get an answer. This lady was ignored by the Lord, but she refused to move. Hallelujah, because she didn't hear an answer from the one she knew that could fix the whole thing. Saints of the Most High God, you and I in this time.
time of life, you got to stay in God's face until you hear from him. She didn't let the fact that the disciples told him to send her away, stop her from getting what she needs from the Lord. Don't you dare sit there in your misery and when you're worshiping God, somebody come tell you it don't take all that. Listen, let me tell you something. They don't know the weight of the burdens that are on your life. They don't know the hell that you're coming through or might just be sitting in right now. But you got to press even under the pressure and stay in God's face until you hear from the Lord. Hallelujah. The next thing, hallelujah, that you got to do to apply pressure is you got to stay in prayer until you get an answer. Yeah, you got to stay in God's face and you got to stay in prayer until you get an answer. That's why the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. That's why the word of God tells us that man are always to pray and not quit, not to faint. Why? Because sometimes the issues and the pressures of this life, since the Lord will keep you from even praying. But you got to find some kind of way, even under the pressure, to press your way. Hallelujah to your face of prayer. Hallelujah. Fall down on your face. Hallelujah. And pray before the Lord because this pressure is rough. But I got to continue to press even under the pressure. Stay in God's face. Stay in prayer. And then the next thing you got to do to apply pressure, hallelujah, is continue to praise until the pressure lifts. Hallelujah. She said, I ain't got to be first as long as I can get what I come for. And I got to go back a second because it's so important for you and I to stay in the spirit of praise even though we are under pressure because the Bible tells us that praise is comely or it's appropriate for the upright. Huh? And the Bible tells us that let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Huh? Uh, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth. Last week he said, I will yet praise you. Hallelujah. For all that you've done. Listen, uh, there's one way for you to get from under the pressure, you got to praise your way, hallelujah, as you press your way. Lord, have mercy. You got to praise your way as you press your way, hallelujah, from underneath the pressure. Yeah, yeah. This woman, she said, I ain't got to be first long I can get what I came for. Uh, this woman exhibited what is called desperate humility. Uh, because for some of us, the first time we hear the word dog, I mean, we think we're being uh, called out or we're being demeaned or we're being, hallelujah, dissed, if you will. But this woman knew where she stood. She knew what she needed and was willing to press any way she needed to press underneath this pressure so that she can get what she came for. I wish I had somebody that's listening right now that will be encouraged, hallelujah, even in your house, even in your bathroom, even in your car, to let your praise ring out to the Lord as you press your way, hallelujah, underneath the pressure until this weight is lifted. She pressed under the pressure. And when she forced the issue, the Bible tells us that Jesus changed his response. Hallelujah. You got to understand that when you apply a little bit of pressure, you get God's attention. When he told this woman, hallelujah, that this ain't for you, hallelujah, the woman said, I understand that it's not, hallelujah, but I still believe that there is enough that falls to somebody like me that can take care of what my daughter needs. Yeah, and she changed the Lord's mind, and, and I believe that his heart was always to give her uh, what she asked for, but this was for our example. Because if it wasn't for his idea to change lives, he wouldn't have went into a place that was damned by the Old Testament. Uh, but see, here's the thing. For us, we got to be like this Canaanite woman. You got to have faith enough to press the issue even when you are under pressure. Yeah. Jesus responded and said to this woman after he had first ignored her. Secondly, after he had rejected her. Thirdly, after he had discounted her, 
he finally responded to the woman and said, woman, great is your faith. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to help you say that. Hallelujah. He said, woman, great is your faith. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. He was telling her, you're going to get just what you asked for. Yeah. Why? Because she pressed under the pressure. Mm. I want to help somebody here today because you're giving up to me. Hallelujah, the first time you cry out and it don't happen, you stop believing that it's possible at all. But I want you to do like this Canaanite woman did. She didn't stop just because she didn't hear on her first request, but she stayed in the Lord's face. I want to encourage you today that you got to press underneath the pressure. Don't let what happens in the natural stop you from looking out in the spirit realm and seeing what is still possible with God. I'm sure she had went to all kinds of folks trying to get her daughter better, but nothing could help. But when she heard that the Lord was coming back, she said, let me go to where he is. And I'm sure that I can get here to take He can take care of what I need to have done. Hallelujah to God. So the Lord told her, Oh woman, great is your faith. I wish somebody out there today that can have great enough faith that can be ignored and say, I'm not moving. That can be and say I'm not moving Hallelujah to God She started out With faith enough to press And by the time She got finished pressing Under the pressure of rejection Jesus said she had great faith Because she was willing To press under the pressure Her daughter was healed Even in that moment I need you to understand something. Healing can come for your family. If you press under the pressure, healing can come for your child. If you press under the pressure, healing can come for your mind. But you gotta press under the pressure. I wish I had somebody that was bold enough to force the issue and say, Lord, I'm gonna stand here until I get what I came for. Lord, I'm gonna stay here until my body is healed. Lord, I'm gonna stay here until my mind is filled up. Can I get somebody to say I'll press even under the pressure? Hallelujah to God. I want to encourage you today that you gotta force the issue. Yes, I know I'm not worthy, but you got what I need. Hallelujah to God. And I'm going to stand like Jacob. I will not let go until you bless me. I will not let go until things are right. I will not leave your presence until my worship is real. I will not leave your presence until understanding comes. I'm going to stand in your presence until the anointing falls. I will not let go until I get what I came for. I'm going to pray even under the pressure. Hallelujah to God.
that she spent all that she had. And she didn't get better, but she got worse. I know it seems to you like the more you push, the worse things get. But don't let the devil cheat you out your victory. Because it goes on to say on the day that she heard that the Lord was standing by.
who said, Lord, have mercy. The fever didn't break. But then I was reminded, hallelujah, of Romans 8, 28, that declares that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them who are the called according to their purpose. And I pressed. I pressed. Days when I'm sitting there because of the effects of COVID, wondering when my smell coming back, when my taste coming back, and hearing all this stuff saying you might not ever get it back, but I press. And I begin to tell the Lord, thank you for restoration. Even under the pressure of the reality of what not was, I pressed and I told the Lord, thank you for what shall be. And as I pressed, I praised. And even some days when I didn't feel it, and it wasn't a reality, I saw, I said, I can taste it. <laughs> no, no, I started saying I can smell it. Even when it wasn't a reality, because I don't, I don't walk by what I see, hallelujah, or what my senses are telling me. I go by what my faith is telling me. And faith told me that I was coming out as long as I pray. Before you know it, even under the pressure, she'll start getting stronger. Yeah. People broke two days after I almost gave up. See, you can get almost to the point where you about to give up, but you got to press. Even under the pressure. A woman could have very easily, when the Lord didn't answer her, said, It must not be for me. But when you want it bad enough, you don't just let the matter, a single circumstance, keep you from crying out like she cried out, keep you, keep up from getting God's attention like she got God's attention. Look, if you want it bad enough, shock. Press back, press back, let's press in. 
apply pressure to what's pressuring me. But the weapon of our walk are carnal, they have mighty through God, they're, they're spiritual weapons. And praise is your weapon, prayer is your weapon, the word of God is your weapon. So while you're under the pressure, press back with the scriptures. Press back with praise. Press back, say, peace be still. Hallelujah. Press back, say, I shall not die but live. And declare the works of the Lord. Press back, say, the Lord has chasing me so, but he has not given me over unto death. Press back and say, the Lord walketh up to and fro on the earth. Hallelujah. He's going to take care of everything that belongs to him. Got to press back with the word. If you press back under the pressure, you'll find your way pressing your way from under the pressure. And this will turn you for a testimony. But you gotta press. You gotta press. You gotta press the issue. You gotta be aggressive. You gotta be aggravated. I'm not gonna let go. I'm not gonna stop praising. I'm not gonna stop singing this song. I'm not gonna stop quoting these scriptures and taking this. Even under pressure. You gotta be encouraged to press. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word. Many of us would like this came tonight woman. Lord God, we would have stayed long enough to get what we needed. So God, I just pray now that you give us that tenacity, you give us that, that will to receive what we need from you. That we don't run off because of they say, that we don't run off because of the crowd. But God, that we stay in your faith. And that we press, Lord God, until we get what we can. That we force the issue until we get what we can. Help us to press even under the pressure. Help us to praise even under the pressure. Help us to speak peace even under the pressure. Help us to have faith even under pressure. Because, to be honest with you, Lord God, from the way it looks, this thing ain't going away right now. It looks as if this season is going to extend for a little while, God, but you have blessed us in this season. You have healed us in this season. You have strengthened us in this season. Help us to continue to press. Even under the pressures of fears, even under the pressures, Lord God, of negative diagnosis or prognosis, from physicians, Lord God, help us to continue to press in the name of Jesus. We under the pressure of our own fears. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Help us to press, Lord God. Even if we are offensive to the crowd. Even if nobody else wants us there, God, we're going to continue to press. Because you have what we need. So we're going to press until we get what we need. We're going, to, we're going to stay faithful until we get what we need. And then we're going to continue in faith. We're going to continue in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray now. And we want to the sound of my voice, Lord God, be encouraged and strengthened, Lord God, to press. To force the issue, even under the pressure of rejection. Even under the pressure where it seems like, Lord, you're not hearing us, God. Help us to continue to press. Because your word tells us other than what our feelings are. Your word says that your eyes are open. They are upon the righteous. And that your ears are open unto our cry. God, do hear us. And we'll press until that which we ask for manifests itself in our lives. In the name of Jesus. We won't lose heart. We won't lose faith. We'll take courage in our heart, in our mind, and in our spirit. And we'll press until we get what we came for. Even under pressure. Oh God, we thank you. We speak blessings over every home. 
We speak healing in every home. We speak strength in every home. In the name of Jesus, God, we speak power out of the mouth of every believer. Lord, God, let thy word proceed. Hallelujah. That is show forth and bring forth power and results in their lives. In the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you right now. I pray for those who are dealing with loss, burying loved ones on yesterday, that you strengthen their hearts in the days ahead, that you be a perfect comfort for them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen them to do God will and God will alone. I give you glory for what you've done. I give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing right now because you are strengthening us Hallelujah, to continue this fight of faith, declaring your word, singing your praises as we press our way. Thank you for the victory that we have over sin and death, that you have given unto us through your son, Jesus Christ. We praise you right now. Look on those, Lord God, that are listening that may not know you in the part of their sin. That they will surrender their lives to you. Believing in their heart and confessing with their mouth. That you died for their sins and rose again on the third day. Accepting you as Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus. I pray for them. Whosoever will let them come. Knowing that no man can come unless you draw them. But we're praying that you draw them in the name of Jesus. To the saving of their souls. We thank you for victory. We glorify you now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Family of God, be encouraged and depressed. Even under pressure. Because when we do, we get God's attention. And we get what we can do. I want you to be blessed courage and strength. Join us this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock for Midweek Family, a virtual Bible study the Red Light Christian Church. God be the glory for the things He has done, is doing, and will do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a good day.